piece for the <laughs> yeah. AI tool. That's all. It's a little bit like the Ron Burgundy, right? Like, who put that on the teleprompter? You know, like <laughs> Jason's reading back from ChatGPT again. Get somebody get up there. Uh, Jonathan, I had someone asking about the uh, spheres that you had mentioned earlier and how they were perfectly round on those camera lenses to, to give us that beautiful, clear picture that we're overlooking. Um, what impact could a not perfectly round spear have? Would that change the maximum depth that it could go or break away at, at lower depths? Great question. Um, now, I'm no underwater physicist, but uh, my understanding is that a sphere is the uh, most optimal pressure vessel, and that is why, unlike the original Alvin dives that Dr. Ballard did, um, they are usually a perfect spherical uh, um, titanium, uh, basically, housing that goes around the human. Um, and that's because it distributes the pressure equally on all sides. Now, if that sphere wasn't a perfect, uh, if it wasn't a perfect sphere, then that pressure is distributed in not evenly across right. the surface. So there'll be more pressure on one side than another. Um, as an example, just looking at the bottles on the front of Hercules, they're long cylinders. So you could um, in terms of surface area that is exposed um, to the pressures, there's more surface area on the sides, which is longer, mm -hmm. kind of the length of the cylinder than there is on either end cap. So as a result, um, although of course these are were engineered by Sexton to to withstand all of the pressures, they did all the calculations. But uh, if they were aluminum or a more ductile metal, um, there could be deformation on the center portion of the um, cylinder. In other words, it would kind of squeeze in more in the center than the outside, which would be uh, could lead to a catastrophic implosion. Um, now, in this instance, those those spheres of glass, I'm sorry, hemispheres of glass, so half of a sphere that is the lens of the front is also specially designed to going to mate perfectly with the engineered surface of the front of the uh, bottle. And it honestly just gets more and more complex on how pressure um, interacts with everything. That includes the seals, the pressure seals that are on it, um, and all of those mating surfaces between two different materials. Um, so essentially, round is good. And if you start doing things that are flat or weird shaped, you really need to know how pressure is interacting with the types of material used and the void of air on the inside. Nice. Um, one of the things you'll see on, on RV Hercules, if you look on our technology pages and some of the images of Hercules themselves, is uh, many of the electronics elements um, are actually what are called oilies. So oilies uh, are electronics compartments that are filled with a non-conductive uh, oil that actually then naturally, quote unquote, res uh, um, withstands the pressure. So like our junction box, where all of our little electronics that um, are relayed through the rest of the vehicle, that is all actually encased in um, an oil, I'm sorry, uh, is filled with oil. So it's just a plastic box, right? It's just a plastic mm. box. All it, all it's there is to keep water from coming in and oil from going out. Um, so it doesn't have to be mated out of titanium to withstand the pressure. It's just the fact that um, the oil is a non-compressible material in the inside um, that works. And of course, that doesn't work for, for a camera. You right. can't have a camera just suspended in oil. Well, they are. There are optics now that are being developed. With, pre with precisely that in mind, but for this system, we don't have any. For Zeus, it's just a void of air um, because you can't just, you know, squirt oil in there and expect everything to work. Right. We had a viewer describe our, our, our winch dilemma as the Salem winch trials. Ooh. What? A winch Wait. dilemma? A winch, di our winch dilemma yeah. that we were working with, we had a viewer describe it as the Salem winch trials. Oh, I Ooh. love yeah. that. Perfect for the day. We are. <laughs> I think the winch controller needs a public flogging of some sort or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm uh, finding a little bit of information about the 0.68 cable. It's uh, 2,465 pounds per kilometer. 
So what is that? 2.45 pounds per meter. Is that right? Come on, Kristen Science. I, I never said I was good at math. <laughs> you no, excelled in physical right. chemistry. I think that's right, yeah. So the safe working load for the, the di it's actually the diameter of the cable is 0 0.681 inches. That's why we call it the 6.8 cable. Safe working load is 14,000 pounds. And uh, it, that's a key number for us on, if you're a couple expeditions ago, you remember our aircraft carrier dives out near Midway. Mm -hmm. um, they were so deep, 5,000 meters, that you would have okay so here's a question for the audience are we are you monitoring the uh, chat yes Devin? okay yes i'm on it so if the wet weight of the cable is 2006 pounds per kilometer and we dove to 5000 meters how much would the cable weigh how much wood would wood chuck chuck in water and then we're going to look up at atlanta's weight I'm so glad all I have to do is monitor the chat for You're this. Doing a good job. So, if the folks at home then look up uh, at Atlanta and at Atlanta's weight in water, and if our safe working load is 14,000 pounds, how much, what was our factor of safety basically on a 5,000 meter dive? How much capacity did our cable have? remaining so 5,000 meters is five kilometers already I love this this is this question is only open to like people 10th grade and under it's, oh uh, oh yeah I mean oh. we, we can't have the Dr. Well, then, Kristen Mitchells of the this, world chiming the in with the this, this answer is going to be completely appropriate then if we're talking about 10th grade and under Okay. So the answer is, it weighs the same as a duck. A duck? So, it, yeah. Funny answers are, uh, we're open to all the funny answers, the appropriate ones we will read out in the chat. Yep. But so what, so what? it's so 5,000 it meters is five kilometers, right? And we said 2,006 pounds per kilometer. So five times 2,006 is 10,030 or something, is that right? Yeah, 10,030? Head nods from, uh, yeah, so 10,030 pounds is just the weight of the wire. Okay. And then if you add at Atlanta to that, 1,700 pounds, so that's 10,000, 11,000, 11,730 pounds of load. Just that, and that's static. That is just if the ship is sitting perfectly still. Still. And now you imagine that we're in a, in a changing sea state and the ship's right. moving up and down. And so that cable's being pulled and yanked. So there's the, the force of the water or the force against at Atlanta as the ship, he ship heaves up that's adding an additional load to that. So we're at a 14,000 pound working load, safe working load on that cable, and we're already, with no added stress from heave or ship movement, we're already at 11,000. That's right at the hairy edge, I would say, as an engineer, if I would be capable kind of conducting that operation. So th that's why the, it was such, um, it was so so considerate though their approach to how they were going to do those absolutely deep dives. a lot of validity to to what their concerns can were. i uh can i jump in yeah Please. yeah let's do it we're, we're just uh okay go so ahead on spl here here's here's i'm on spl update me update the update is uh we know uh what's not broken now but we still don't know what's uh we have an intermittent issue uh, with the uh, control of the winch, and we think uh, the issue might be in the main electronics enclosure in the... Uh, in the room, winch room? In the winch room, yeah. So um, So this also affects the social deck control? And no, it seems to be working from the social deck control. So the Dynacon system is quite... Uh, the relay logic is is uh, somewhat sophisticated. There's a lot of interlocks on a winch, and with the changing of the boxes and all that business, and the wiring to the three boxes. So, anyways, uh, we're pretty confident that the issue is not in this control box or the social deck control box. Something to do with 
uh, while this box has control, the brake release is not uh, reliably releasing, and uh, it's intermittent. So as we, it should release right as you barely deflect the joystick, and it's not doing that. So, anyways, long story short, um, recommendation is the recommendation is uh, we will uh, after that conversation I just had there with Robert. Um, so to mitigate the risk, we would like to not move the boat and the winch at the same time. And we can continue operations with just the person on the social deck to control the winch. So basically we can drop down and look at the site and do uh, maybe some small vessel moves, but having the dynamic of the vessel moving and the winch um, in a really dynamic terrain is challenging. In a dynamic yeah. terrain. So what happens is we get uh, standby deck. Uh, we get a layback with a standby, standby, please. Um, where was I? Sorry. I, I uh, the layback with Atalanta is something we can't control yep right so if we have a layback and we're approaching the wall and we can't winch up it could be it could be bad so if we're not moving the vessel around the wall is not going to sneak up on us and yeah you know, yeah I and gotcha. we have we have more time to react for any issues that we might have with the winch so the uh kind of the uh, decision is we're right above one of the waypoints here so we can go ahead and drop down johan can you zoom out let's just make sure it's the since we're up in the blue water, just make sure, do we want to, Dan, while we're safe, do we want to move to like waypoint two, drop on that, and then we can come along the bottom to waypoint three? Those were the two prime targets. Aren't we above waypoint two right now or waypoint three? We're above some waypoint. Yeah, I we're, we're, it. We're, it looks like we're above three. Correct, yeah. Um, you don't want to just drop down and look at that one right yeah, now? Yeah, it does. I think it's it don't matter. Let's do what you, you suggested. Yeah, we're here. Good. we're here, so we'll go down and have a look. Yep. Okay. I like looks. Let's that'll that'll get you to the seabed the quickest, and then uh, we can. Uh, okay. Here we go. Look out below. Look out below. Uh, sorry, Mike was in the middle of uh, updating the back row here. Okay, I'm gonna try and pay out. We're gonna drop down to the seabed and have a look around. Let me uh, let me play with it for now. Um, uh, deck control. Are you there, Mike? Deck control. Yeah, it does do that. I have done that. So if I barely deflect the stick now, the brake release light is lighting as it should. Roger that. Okay, I have control. Uh, the general plan in here is to not move the ship. And we're just going to drop down and have a look, uh, see what we got below us here at one of the waypoints. I do that. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Um, funny enough, it seems to be working for the moment. I'm just going to play with it here for a minute and see if it works as it should. Just wants attention, like a lot of us. Yeah. Yeah. Let me drop down first and see what we've got before we move the ship, okay? Not that I don't trust that map, but I don't trust that map. That's pretty fair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please, yeah. Oh, 20, 25, something like that. It's come down about uh, 20 meters a minute there. 
I'm going to come uh, more underneath you because I can see where the uphill is there. So I want to be uh, to the east of you. We go. We got okay, come on, I'll stop there. I'll stop on the winch. <coughs> yeah, uh, just give me a second here and I'll look around and see if my sonar matches your sonar. site. What's the range of bearing to your waypoint? And what's the depth of this uh, feature we're going to look at? So deeper than we are. So to the north, but deeper. So obviously I can't go deeper here because I'm looking north. Uh, that's a bit of a conundrum. Uh, you say it's northwest from here. Slightly northwest. All right. Uh, My cameras are focused. My goodness, look at this. Kristen, are those colors what you were expecting? Uh, honestly, I'm not really sure what I was expecting. Um, there definitely does not look like um, sulfide to me could be a little bit of iron it's a little more yellow than I would have expected honestly yeah um, irons usually orange um, okay let's do uh, 20 meters northwest please 315 so we drop down into uh, a feature called Pele's pits and this is uh, was a was a dome um, until 1996. Earthquakes in the area caused the collapse of that dome. And uh, can you zoom in on that so I can make produce this heads really, or tails really of it really over here? Right. Okay. So as we continue to come down the cliff face here, uh, we hope to see. The tells are kind of uh, shimmering water, so if the viewers see it before we do, uh, uh, please chime sense. in. But the shimmering water is what, a sign of, meters from the way point? kind of water like that. Uh, right with there. a different temperature differential. And we expect the water coming out of these vents to be much warmer than the seawater. So it almost looked like a little blur. It will look blurry, yeah. shimmery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an indicator that our, our water is hot. So... Keep your eyes peeled. The fisheye cameras are really, really helpful. Maybe we can send the fisheye out. Uh, well, maybe not. We've got still got the Norbit going, which is actually interesting too. Yeah. Is that a hagfish? Well, it's something, something wiggly on. It's going to 
put that porch out in your view a little there, Jonathan. It's not in my view yet. Not at all. Not at all? Nope. It's in oh. the stereo camera view. It is in the super fish eye, but don't worry about that. I think we'll... Don't worry about that for now? Nope. No, nope. protect oh. it for now, and then we can get fancy once we get comfy. Yeah. I'm just uh, putting a little porch in the bank. Because we're going to get closer. But the depth perception is hard there on Zeus. It looks like this feature blends in right to the background, but is uh, prominent. I'm going to hold this. You shouldn't have to move the winch right now. Did you copy that? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to minimize the required dynamics here. Cause um, the more things that are moving and talking at the same time, the more nervous I get. Well, um, if possible, Dan, we can just do a really simple lateral. Um, I'd, I'd like to get just a really quick time-lapse interval, make sure that files yep. are downloading, yep. Yep. et cetera. That's what I've been doing. Thank you. I'll do it again. But this time closer. I really want to turn my down lights on. Uh, go ahead. Do Serious? Yeah, I'd like to see it. Um, and Kristen, I, I just started a time lapse. Uh, I think the dine that the that's down lights on. Yeah. Fantastic. Check out Cinema Cam. Look, you can see meters below the that's ROV. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah. What a novel idea. Yeah, the Cinema Cam view is. Pete, you can probably switch the. Uh, Norbit with the cinema cam if you've got it queued up. Uh, I got it. It's up here in your upper right. Or are you talking about satellite? Satellite. View? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Roger. Yeah. So on satellite feed net three now, you've got uh, the two lower images are the stereo cameras and the. Center is the cinema camera. Different lenses provide. Are you zoomed in on Atlanta? Yeah, stop doing that, please. Zoom out. Freaking me out. <laughs> if you're going to do that, let me know. You can do that while the vehicle is stationary and we're taking a sample or something, but while the ship is moving and while the ROV is moving, that's. Uh, yeah, as I have mentioned, too many dynamics, so I we can't see what's happening with the tether, or what's coming up around us. You can also hit the auto iris, and it will stop doing that. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta let me know when you do that. It freaks me out. So I look up and I catch something that is not right, and then that causes me to uh, pause my view there and focus in on it long enough to. Stuff the ROV into the cliff or move out of Atlanta into the cliff or something bad. Yeah, so just getting to the bottom, we're, we're going to do a little camera check out here as we uh, work laterally along the wall and then we'll be descending down to the base of the pit. You're fine, yeah. To this uh, vent target. Don't do anything, Helmet. I haven't seen any <laughs> uh, shimmering water yet. <laughs> Not initially expected along the cliff face. Uh, you shouldn't have to rotate. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs when we're two and a half meters from the cliff in an unknown neighborhood and the boat's moving. I'm do that. Yeah, if I want you to do something, I'll, I'll ask you, okay? So Dan, can you confirm which lights? Are on, off? Uh, they are all on except for our uh, starboard and port lights, which are have been rearranged to the manipulator. 
Uh, whenever you feel comfortable, I'd love to swing that arm out and just do some light cycles. Okay. This is the lecture I just gave to Hooman. Uh, not while the boat's moving. Roger. Once we, get, once we get set up on a, you know, get ready to do a shot on a feature or yeah. some known location, then yeah, we can. All right. I'll be a lot more comfortable with it. No, no if you can lateral to the left, there was a... Was yep. That's the way the boat has moved. Okay. So I'm just waiting for Atlanta to... God, super to interesting how it's crusted. Baby steps here, people, baby steps. Okay. Is the layover that we're seeing is, is so quite So sorry, you said our target depth was... I am going to try... Huh? 11.52. Uh, let's see, curl. Okay, let's come uh, down easy on the winch, and uh, we're gonna come down the wall here. Uh, 20 meters you can hold. 15 to 20. So, yeah, I get Atlanta a lot closer to the vehicle, depending on the what's happening, but I'm going to be on the Kristen, I'm gonna stop ultra conservative now? side with the, uh, with the issue we have with the winch right now. I don't trust it yet. It's only been one. And I'm going to do minutes. a test record for stereo VR. You want me to pull that porch in? Uh, no. Tell you what, no, not yet. Might as well. Let me just get, I'll get two sample data sets while we're just tooling around here. It's, yeah. It's out. Go ahead. Uh, it's out like way further than the camera. So when it's all the way in, it's just on par. Roger. Um, up to you then, actually. I th Yeah, let's go ahead. If you feel comfortable, let's, let's pull it in. Let's go full cinema on this just to do a test data set. Yeah, I do because I have this uh, beautiful uh, cinema camera looking down below me, so I know what's coming up. Well, that's a spatial awareness yeah, it's I super, do not use. Super have. cool, isn't it? Yeah. Just love that. So uh, we are uh, slowly descending here while the boat is uh, stationary. So now we're not moving the boat, we're moving the winch. And just coming down into the hole here uh, to our target depth of 1250 something. Roger. And then uh, once we get down to there, we'll have a look around with the sonar and see which way we can move. Okay, I started a H265 record, Kristen, if you could record that through. Thank you. Not sure if it's the camera view or not, but I'm getting a little bit of blur. Do you see Which that one? at all? Right through here, kind of wavy. Uh, yeah, the could be. I'm, I don't think that that's real. Oh no! Okay. <coughs> the reds are associated with iron. Key okay. Shepard used to kick my chair whenever I would do anything that he didn't like. So. So there's a good example there, Jonathan. You see yeah, that? Yeah, look at that situational awareness. That bit sticking out. So I catch that in the cinema camera before I come down and hit it with the, uh, yeah. with the vehicle. So in addition, of course, to taking really pretty pictures, which Captain Camera myself really cares about, um, whenever you put a new instrument like this on ROV Hercules, uh, we're looking to make sure that it's both uh, safe and it benefits multiple different uh, scenarios. So. Um, that's part of the reason uh, we've reoriented the cinema camera um, to the top brow to look down, which which still makes it, and in fact is, is one of the best spots for photogrammetry, but in addition to that, it's a massive um, uh, help to ROV pilots just for a scenario like this. You can see in satellite feed 3, the thing is pointed almost straight down. Well. It's actually pointed at about a 50 degree angle down, but it allows us to actually see below um, and kind of what's coming up on that terrain um, so that a pilot like Dan can uh, do what he's doing right now, which is maintain a constant steady distance away from a vertical feature, complex terrain. One meter away, by the way. One meter, exactly. Less, less than a meter. I'm liking that. And if you can see in the stereo view, it's just absolutely spectacular what we're getting right now. 
um, because and because we're recording in, in stereoscopic 3D, um, this is exactly the kind of thing that will look amazing uh, inside of a, a stereo headset. That's this is going to be something I'm excited to get to process because um, I mean, just look at it. The encrusting nature of these sulfides. I'm assuming they're sulfides. Not sulfides. Okay. Yeah. Um, the yellow thing. What 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 do you think I, that they are? You're probably looking at iron oxides. Iron oxides. I like or just the, iron. There's like a darker staining there too in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then, are do you think that that's encrusting just like a basalt, like a like a lava flow there? It's hard to tell if there's anything living there. It's possible that there's some kind of mat there, but it's hard. It's hard to tell without a zoom in. Yeah. It could just be um, precipitation of Roger. the minerals. Yeah. I cannot believe how vertical this is from the from the image that we saw. I'm sorry, the map that we saw. I'd, I'd kind of assumed this was a little bit of like a moundy cone. That is straight up and down. Yeah, it's impressive. This is where the collapse happened, though, right? It is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think we're uh, from what I can tell here. We're at the bottom. All right. uh, obviously, the vertical has kicked out underneath me. You can see in Atlantis sonar, we're in a bit of a tight spot. We have walls on three three sides of us. Roger. And we're pretty much at our... Uh, Johan has given us a target depth of uh, 1250 and change. I'm going to stop recording right now. Um, Uh, I'm going to go off the line here and uh, hand it back to Robert. Roger. Hummocky flows. To our viewer that was chiming in about seeing the heat stream, it got me to that digital focus. It tricked me a few times. I thought that I was looking at that blur that we were talking about we'd be locating uh, where these vents might be coming through but looks as of right now we're still still searching sorry Devin I I didn't I was uh, tuned out what no that's you? okay I when I uh, earlier I had thought that I saw a little bit of the blurring yeah and um, turned out it was just the the cameras doing oh, okay. their adjustments and whatnot, and someone else had just timed in that that digital focus that, that was happening. It tricked them a couple of times too. They thought that we were must be getting very close to seeing those those vents and that water starting to heat up. Yeah, but even not uh, quite yet. outside the control van here, there's a few monitors that will produce this shimmering look, and mm -hmm. people come running in to look at the other screen that is the truer kind of view. I keep uh, clicking over, too, to look at our tabs for water temperature to see if that's yeah, changing at all. And nothing quite yet. We've had to have a lot of patience on the first part of this dive, working with our our winch and We the did a good system. job. We've got the vehicles in the, in the right place with all the, you know, with enough uh, systems in place to complete the dive. So there's still an active discussion about managing the winch from that, that uh, yes. social deck control station. Um, the, the big concern is how dynamic the terrain is. Sounds like they've kind of figured out a good flow. A little bit of ship, a little bit of winch, taking turns. Got some sort of a swimming creature. It is beautiful, though. I'm just 
so thankful to be able to be here and experience this with the team in the van. This is just amazing. If Captain Cameron can get this system tuned up here. Our system be ready to go. So we've got this dark black rock that's covered in uh, goldish, yellowish sort of uh, icing, maybe. Mm. Could describe it. Hydrothermal where? sediments. I would. Uh, Just enough of a coating sorry, that where? you're able to see the the backdrop of the rock. Uh, just briefly in certain areas where yeah. it's kind of okay sides hanging over longer than others. What's this right here, though? The just the different colored, you know. Our man, the wind lass. Trouble at the winch. Oh, I gotta fix this too. Someone wants to know: Do we still have visuals on the pumpkins? Um, I did as see. Far as, I as did far see as we know, pumpkin. they're still there. Yeah, I see a pumpkin in one of the stereo cameras views. Can we so uh, zoom in? No shimmering water there. No. Nope. All right, that's good. Robert, can we go lasers off? If you get a lasers off. Thanks. Oh, Kristen, that more intense color that we're seeing as it's laying on top there, are we thinking that that's just a uh, an extra buildup of the iron there? Yeah, it could be. It's it's really hard to tell without being able to get very close. I, I believe there are microbial mats in this area, but again, if we're not really that close to the vent, the vents, um, it looks like a. Yeah, I don't know that we would see that right here. It could just be more precipitation. Also, with the black, it can't tell if that's the underlying rock or if it's the if there's something actually sitting on top of this. Um, these formations. So what we're looking at is more, more or less the sediments that have kind of gotten blown over 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 time. They've just kind of settled in. Robert, this is also a fantastic, um, I guess, standoff distance. As you can see in the lower left-hand uh, fisheye view, there is the view that we're getting from um, that I'll do the photogrammetry off of. So. About that distance, or maybe a half meter back, is is perfect. This what? Oh, is it? Oh, I thought it was okay. Five six. Jonathan, how much zoom do we have on uh, channel one on that lens? Um, I think it's a 16x zoom, Pete. It's a 22 by. Right. So there you yeah, go. like floaty bits like that. That's like kind of a clue, maybe. It's like coming from us. So uh, video operates channel number one. Oh, okay. Um, and that's the broadcast camera that uh, Jonathan one was alluding to earlier. That is a. Uh, quite a bit different in terms of what its purpose is than a cinema camera. Okay. A broadcast camera has no onboard recording capability. It requires an external recording system, like what you see up here. Right. And um, it's the type of camera that is used in football games and sports and live broadcast television. So it's all about the feed. It's about the, the live component. Right. What we're using on channel three is a cinematic type camera that has onboard recording 
that's um, not typically used in a live environment, though they can be. Okay. See, this looks like pieces of mat floating away. So yep. that's, that's a good clue. Yeah. Yeah. I did stop the photogrammetry. Still about 16 meters off bottom here. Copy. Jason, do we have any intentions on doing any sort of a collection, a slurp, or a... No, the only uh, sampling available to us is uh, with the manipulator, and we, if we do see some fresh glassy lava, which is, I think, unexpected maybe at these two sites, uh, that's been requested, but uh, that's it. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Coming back the other way. I think I'm going to come down a little bit. So you want to. Yeah. Do we know if it was on the wall or at the base of the wall? Or? Describe uh, as the base. Yeah. that data lab um, yeah we have a depth a new depth of 1298 as a 1298 as a descriptor yeah that's uh, quite a bit different yeah Rennie's going through the actual log now
Uh, sure, I could do that. I am ready. I'm just mesmerized by the this whole thing. Right. Copy. It's quite interesting all the pattern patterning that you see on uh, the way things uh, have fallen and. Alrighty. Yeah. Well. Normally it would be marine snow, right? And we're seeing in the water is a product of uh, this unique environment okay. here. It's Thanks. being potentially blown up into the water at these right. event sites. So it looks like a bucket lid. Yeah, I think there there's, there's a lot a of descriptions about markers. There's so a bucket lid. Yeah. This is uh, data lab that puts us right at waypoint two. Robert, are you referring to the top right-hand corner? <laughs> you can see it in the no, no worries. Thanks. stereo cams yep. a bit and then in the <laughs> Zeus cam. Yep. Okay, so Robert, that information was actually for our next waypoint, our expected venting okay. site around this waypoint 2. This is 32, two. if that means anything to anybody. Okay. There's some shimmering water right there. Is I that think. a 32? Yeah. I think. A yep. marker with 32? Can we zoom in? Uh, my imagination. <laughs> no, no shimmering water. But marker 32. Probably um, so fair. there is, because yeah. there is a marker here, I'm Robert, not sure. I think I see some shimmering water. If the uh, plan might allow us to do just a little mini grid right at around the bottom the spot, of the screen uh, for whatever researcher might have placed this I'm somewhat interested to see right if there is okay. any historic data associated with right this here. that maybe this is a good opportunity to that looks shimmering to me. yeah that is shimmering water right there it's out of that little crack yep there's more down here oh yeah there you go Good eyes. Yeah, Pete. this is kind of like what I this is what I think about Loihi. It's like look at there's a rock tumble. I think that's, that's just us. To us, this stuff's it's very flocculent. Us. Yeah. yeah, it's super yeah. flocculent. Okay. Hmm. That's Zoom interesting. In yeah. So this is this is the kind of flow I remember from working here. Just little. Little hot spots, lots of bacterial mat. Yeah. Yep. So, what does that 32 represent? <clears throat> That's a marker for this. Somebody had an experiment here. So, I mean, you'd have to you'd have to look through the records to see who's working here. I know Marv Lilly did a lot of work here. Right there. Area. What about that? Yeah. That darker spot. You marking highlights? Oh, definitely for sure, right there. Yeah. Make sure you grab a couple with both Atalanta and Hercules, just so that a couple good shots go back to. Uh... Yep, so we expect this is our target. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a great. Ivy. Sweet. Um, Definitely have that shimmering in the water there for those of you that are listening. Let's us know that we are in an area where a vent is. Th so this answers one of the questions, right? These vents are they they shift and move around. They're dynamic, and here we are at a target that was previously visited by Nautilus in 2018. And uh, the, the first question we wanted to answer is the vent still there? You know, could we find active venting? And and so one box checked. 
It looks like there was a little bit of a spike in the temperature, but it's it's not really much above the ambient water temperature. Yeah, I mean... At least as far as we've gotten close enough to this. And these vents do die out over time as the... Yeah, and this one, definitely, they kind of speculated that it would be kind of dormant at this point. Yep. Given all of the, there's been earthquakes and some uh, volcanic activity in this area, I believe. There's a good so, um, shot with the marker in the vent. In the, uh, might have missed it. Jonathan, while we're looking at this, could you uh, give me a little details on the survey you want to run? And I will start setting that up. Um, I'm just thinking of just a very simple, uh, not fully gridded, but just kind of fly, the, fly around this area, maybe 10 meters up, 10 meters down, something within the limit of the tether. Um, kind of as much as me can do, maybe. Again, I'm concentrating, if you just orient your eyes on the uh, lower left-hand image of Triclops there, that's the view that I want with a consistent standoff distance is the most important part. Okay, great. Yep, and uh, I'm shooting at one frame every three seconds, so as last time, uh, as rapid as you can safely manage is, is the best. The Sorry, say that again, as, as slowly? As rapidly as you can oh, safely cool. manage is, is totally fine. So we can just uh, kind of okay. get a real quick grid in for whatever researcher might be interested in 32 here okay. and then. And you want to go 10 meters down and 10 meters over? So yeah, 10 meters down, 10 meters over, just kind of ice, butter, butter the bread here with uh, the field of view of All the right. camp, sir. 10 meters in horizontal distance, not necessarily. So there's a steel plate. Yeah. Right there. Super interesting. Weights. And Johan, if you could just drop like a, a limit point maybe as we reach and he starts doing another turn, that'd be helpful. Yeah. I mean, you could you could move Atlanta back a bit. Yeah, you could move, you know, north, north twenty. Get behind her. Someone posted that that was possibly a geology marker to measure the movement and the flow rate. Cool. using the data that we have uh, from the research that we'll pull in regards to um, observations made from when that marker was placed there, we'll be able to look for that estimate of sedimentation rate. Detritus is just kind of sort of stagnant in the area. Yeah. <coughs> you want to get overlap here, though, right? Yeah, that's correct, maybe. Is that good? Yep, yep, yep. One the other way. Yep. Yeah, you got it. Zoom, zoom. Those water temperatures are increasing, although not dramatically, but makes you feel like you're playing uh, Donkey what's Kong. That <laughs> what's, that <laughs> what's that game where you used to say you're a hot potato when you're getting closer, getting hotter, getting hotter? You know Marco what I'm Polo? Marco Polo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
playing Marco Polo with ROV Atalanta. Yeah. Ooh, flocking. Oh, look at that. Well, that's gonna, this is exactly what you don't want in a photogrammetry model. <laughs> <laughs> Floaty bits? Floaty bits are not super ideal, but here we are. This is science. That's, uh, that's what you get around these things, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you fly back and forth over. Up to four degrees Celsius yeah, now, we so are. we're definitely heading, I think, in the right direction as far as. Maybe uh, if I can get, let's let's call it uh, three more transects like this, and then we can uh, <coughs> move on. Up the wall? Up the wall, yeah. Yeah, we've got a good thing going. Okay. Really appreciate that top-down view where you can see just how, what an incredible vertical feature it is. Yeah. Is straight jump? You're back already. I think we're going to have a little bit of a shift change here. Got our 12 to 4 watch coming on. Thank you for your patience for all of you that have been following us in the beginning of this dive. Worked through some technical issues and found ourselves in the place exactly where it is that we want to be and are on the search now for these hydrothermal vents. This in total is an 11 hour dive so we've got plenty of dive time left. We can stick around and see what we can find. We encourage you to stay with us. Head on over to nautiluslive.org and you can put in your questions. We'll do our best to get them answered for you as quickly as possible. Where's your costume, Larry? We'll go get it on. Oh. I'm wondering if second shift is going to be Angry as Grandpa? decorated as we are. So, our, what do you wear? What's your costume? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I like that. What is it? Frankenstein. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Your shirt is too. So Frankenstein's in the house. Larry's in the house. You have to ask Larry what his costume is. I think his costume is Larry. He's a Larry, mad. Si he's a mad scientist. Are you going as Larry? <laughs> a mad. Si oh, he's mad. He's making a mad face, you guys. So wow. he is the scientist. He's one of the lead scientists on board. Wow. He's walking around with this mad looking on his face, and so he is the mad He's scientist. always mad. That's perfect. You spending my money. <laughs> Kids All these right, days and too. Ursula is joining us as well. Ursula and, and a pirate. Slomo is on shift at this time, and Ursula will be joining him. Please stick around as we continue to search for these hydrothermal vents. First shift signing off. Hey, Chris. Yeah, here we are in the hole. We're actually out of the hole now. We were well in the hole before. We had 20-meter uh, targets on three sides of Analenta. That was just to the south of us there. And not sure what we're doing. So uh, moving out to some clear water Are here. you on uh, SPL? I am. Dan, we're just uh, completing a lateral. Uh, we're basically buttering the toast going up the slope. Uh, I'd like three more laterals within the range of the tether to the left and right. Right. So you'd be going to the uh, port side, lateraling along the wall, going up five, ten meters, and then going left, whatever's coverage. Right. I'm going right at the moment because... Uh, That's perfect. I'll start the time lapse again. Right. It was and, all... Uh, uh, as many beans as you feel is safe. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go nice and slow here because uh, it's pretty, uh, 
you saw the all the stuff floating in the water when I came in here? Yep. So if we move too fast, we'll stir it up and you'll get uh, a whole a lot more pint cloud than you bargained for. Try the Chris? down lights again there. I turned them off for a minute when it was... Uh, Go ahead, Larry. Could I ask you to zoom out so I can try to figure out where we are? Uh, yeah. In the world? <clears throat> Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yep. Wow. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah, so this is the, uh, the third pit, crater pit. Mm -hmm. on the summit. So this is the most recent one. This is what they call Pele's Pit. I just wanted to make sure that's <laughs> that's where we were. You can look to your right a little for so me. This is the one, one that formed from uh, the collapse. That's a collapse Let's pit that formed uh, in 1996 seismic coming up activity. There And one more zoom out, please, Chris. Yep. Okay, that's good. That's that's good. All right. Okay. So if 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 I remember, uh, at least a few years ago, the the vent sites were actually uh, towards waypoint one, I think. Waypoint one, yeah. Okay. I think. How far is that? Light years away. A uh, couple ship links. couple ship links. All right. 160 meters. Yeah, we're going to kind of... But we have to keep in mind, though, that uh, these vents are often ephemeral. What's that? The vents are often ephemeral. They'll change and move. Yeah. Stop and start. And I don't know if we can quite get there as the crow flies. Well, well first, we're, first we're doing Jonathan's... Photogrammetry. Have to yep. Follow the wall around to it. So. Photogrammetry. Then um, I think just uh, just set expectations for the next uh, for the next couple of hours. I think um, I think we're just looking for some very dramatic features, some overhangs, um, anything else that really makes this truly stand out as being a volcanic site. And once we reach one of those points, I think that we'll switch back over into uh, a good cinematography mode. Mm -hmm. we'll extend out the cameras again, uh, and then uh, start to test some of the lighting configurations. Okay, I'm gonna. What do you say? Come up how many meters? Uh, come up five meters, please, sir. Five meters. So you certainly have. Sure. You, certainly you can, have you can some see the overlap in the uh, lower lower left hand. Yeah, you can also come up five. So that uh, that big roundish reddish feature, it's kind of centerish in frame right now. Maybe make that at the lower. Oh, uh, you just. You just say when. I can't look when. at one thing that long. When. when? Yep. Okay, we came up three meters. There you go. So you certainly have some Moving left. overhanging topography here. I on, do like uh, this. Uh, on the uh, crater wall. It is true. And you have some color. I like color. And contrast. We like contrast. All the things that uh, you're looking for. I think, uh, yeah, well, let's, uh, let's, I'd like to do just one over here. And then reach the end of the tether that way to starboard and or port, sorry. And then I'll get that right by the end of the cruise. I lost the plot after you said go left, so just go left. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but all you're talking is going into the. Oh, that's okay. You don't stratosphere. ROV just just or maybe other look. people are listening, but I'm not. <laughs> um, so we'll go to the end and then head up three meters. Return to starboard, and then we'll be we'll be back maybe in the. There is an overhang uh, just above us, as you saw there, going by. Uh, Love it. We'll catch on the next pass. <coughs> Should we have to back off a little? I came up there. Yeah, I'm we will. Need target to, depth uh, of 1240. So I'm up five now. Roger. The last pass was 1250. Uh, 1245 now. Good. But I ran a little more Z bias here. We uh, have a happy Halloween for everyone. Um, and a question, how hot is the water coming out of the thermal vents that we're hunting for? And how big are the vents? 
Yeah, well, how big they are, we're, we're yet to see. They, I don't think these are extremely large vents. Um, before 1996, there were some vents up on the summit here, and they were actually very low temperature vents, about 30 degrees centigrade. Um, and then in 1996, there was a large seismic event which created this uh, crater that we're in. It's a, a collapse pit, um, so the magma came up and then drained out and left this, this crater that we're seeing, this pit. Um, and then after that, new vents formed, and those vents uh, originally were on the order of about 77, 80 degrees centigrade, but then a year later they came back to another set of vents, and I think that's the one we're heading to now, that were uh, over 200 degrees centigrade, so Remarkable. Really, really oh, wow. quite hot. Remarkable. Yeah. And that's, I said, all very recent. You know, the 200 degree temperature was measured, I think, in 1997. <clears throat> I love how angular the geometry is right now. And okay, we're going to come up another five meters. There. Uh, you're good. Let me come up first a little bit. If you come up we're now, seeing this uh, yellowish cover color because uh, that was the, for the background. The fluids sorry. coming out of the vents are, are sulfide rich, and so they're coating coating all this with sulfide, uh, sulfur color material. Okay, that's five up, headed right. Thank well, you. You're all right for now. We're stretched out. Well, since we're all settled in, I'm going to go around and uh, for introductions. Um, so, hi, my name is Ale. I am the Science Communication <sighs> Fellow aboard uh, the Nautilus. Uh, me, we right, are uh, exploring some geology here and looking for some hydrothermal vents. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit on the Nautilus Live website, there's a box there where you can send us a message or a question. So feel free to do that. We are here to answer your questions. Jonathan? Hey, my name is Jonathan Feely. I'm the Ocean Exploration Trust media producer. Um, I'm the lead for the camera system that we're here to test, the Wide Field Camera Array. Uh, it's uh, Currently on satellite feed three, it composed, it's composed of two fisheye lenses that are designed to uh, create the kind of immersive VR, XR, or giant dome screen projection. Um, and a cinema camera, which is kind of the dominant portion of the screen there that's currently faced down. Between all three cameras, what we're doing right now is collecting uh, imagery suitable for photogrammetry. So we're gonna reconstruct the 3D structure of this wall as we continue to explore, to be able to share it around the world and kind of create some immersive video game-esque uh, experiences. So uh, you can eventually explore this at home. Uh, Larry? Yes, I'm uh, Larry Mayer. I'm the watch leader on this watch. And uh, by day, I am the director of the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping at the University of New Hampshire, a group that specializes in all different aspects of seafloor and ocean mapping. Taylor Ann? Hello everyone, I'm Taylor Ann. I am the science manager and data logger on this watch. Um, when I'm not on the Nautilus, I am a research assistant at U UCLA and a master's student at Cal State Northridge. I'll pass it on up to you, Chris. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm Chris Krasnowski. Uh, I'm here operating as a navigator today and also as a high-resolution uh, acoustic mapping specialist. I'm Dan, sitting in the Hercules chair currently. Moving along this wall at a depth of 1,240 meters, less than one meter away from it, with a lot of glass in front of me. Love it. Love it. Loving it. This is the dream here. This is the dream. And you can just see on this current cinema camera on satellite feed three looking just straight down at just how incredibly vertical this structure is. We have some more intros. Ray? Um, yeah, I'm Rye. 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 I'm sitting in the Atalanta seat, so I'll be the bird's eye view of what Hercules is doing for the next four hours. Um, when I'm not on the Nautilus, I work for Ocean Networks Canada as a project engineer. Rye is currently 20 meters away from the wall. Oh. <laughs> And, and on that sector scanner, the 
from uh, Atlanta shows how exciting the topography is around us. Uh, 50 meter wall, got to like it. <laughs> uh, my name is Manel. I am the video engineering intern uh, here on the EV Nautilus. And when I'm not on the Nautilus, I'm working in science communications as a filmmaker and photographer for Maryland Sea Grant. Okay, and I think, is that everybody? Yeah. Yep. I think so. All right, let me, let me uh, offer a little uh, context uh, of where we are and what we're doing. We're now exploring uh, a small little, what's called pit crater, that is on the top of the very, very youngest of the Hawaii Island volcanoes. The Hawaii Island chain is a long chain of uh, volcanoes um, that stretches, well, something like 8,000 kilometers to the northwest and, and then turns north and changes into the Emperor Seamount chain. And these islands are each volcanoes or groups of volcanoes that were formed as the plate, the Pacific plate, moved over what's called a hot spot. And the hot spot is a place where there's magmatic activity, the a very, very hot spot where the Earth's crust melts and magma forms. But unlike the plates, which are constantly moving, the hot spot for some reason stays fixed relative to those moving plates. And so what we have is a series and the RV of... RV is going to come up five meters now to uh, one, two, three, five. A series of islands that are formed. We, the get, Getting older and older as we move out to the west. So islands like Kauai and, and uh, Molokai are older than the islands further to the east. The island of Oahu is probably three to four million years. Molokai may be two million years old. And uh, the big island it, where there's current activity sits still ob above that hotspot. So we have uh, Mauna Loa and Kilauea erupting still because they're sitting over that hot spot now. Okay, moving and left at one, two, three, five. The newest of, of the islands being formed is what used to be called Luihi, now called Kamaehua Kanaloa, um, and that's where we're exploring now. It hasn't come to the surface yet. Give it a give it a million years or so, and I can invest in some good real estate. But right now, it's still totally submerged, with the top of it at about a thousand meters deep, um, and we've dipped 200 meters into uh, this crater that sits uh, one of three craters on top of the summit. It's kind of a relatively flat summit with these three craters in it. Um, this crater we're in is the most recent one. It formed in 1996 when there was uh, some seismic activity. Clearly magma came up and uh, it created new deposits on the side of the volcano. Uh, rose up here in the top part and then drew, drew out. And in that drawing out of the magma, left the void and that collapse creating this uh, this uh, collapse pit and so we're ex exploring the side of the wall right now and that's why it's so vertical because you can imagine a, a plug of uh, molten material coming up and then draining out it leaves that kind of vertical uh, vertical uh, plug um, and uh, course, uh. vertical void uh, and also led to the creation of more recent uh, hydrothermal vents uh, the, the hot ones that uh, I just mentioned before with temperatures above 200 degrees. We see it all being no. yellow I here because right here the fluids yeah. coming out of the hydrothermal vents are, are rich in sulfides, uh, sulfur material, and that has this yellow color that's coating everything. Very cool. Wait, so that's why they look like uh, like they giant can, uh, funny ends? Five for me, right? Giant Funny ends. The funny ends. Yeah. What's a funny end? They're like the you get like a bag of them at like the dollar store, but they're they're like onion rings, but they're like seasoned. Like chips. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. chips. Yeah. Yeah. So that looks like funions to you. Yeah, the funnion rings. Yeah. They look. Yeah. It looks like basalt lavas and sections of basalt <laughs> lavas, and each is covered with yellow. <laughs> but having never seen a funion, I don't know. I. I got a bag. I'll share some with you. That one. <laughs> 
I'll look before I taste it. Because to be honest, the wall doesn't look terribly appetizing to me. So. Yeah, well, we've been trying to relate everything to food, haven't we, <laughs> on this watch? Well, we've continued. So. Yeah. I'm not seeing the Funyun analogy. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the color of Funyuns. How can I have missed this all my life? Funyuns, gosh. <laughs> yeah, we, we got you covered. <laughs> Thank you. It's always a, a learning experience when I come up here. I'm getting more like like fried plantains, mm. you know, like especially from the ones that are like circular and kind of look like they're bursting from the center. Well, that's what you're seeing really is a cross section of a pillow flow. Oh, wow. Remember, you remember they, had, they always had that shape that kind of, and so you're just seeing that it's just really a cross section of a pillow there, but mm -hmm. now it's been coated in, coated in the, in the yellow and, and it's been broken off because the, when the magma came oh. up, it came up through this region and then right. psh, collapsed down, leaving, leaving, uh, you know, just carving this, this void. That is so cool. Uh, we have a question and I guess it's appropriate for Halloween. Uh, what has been the scariest thing that you have ever encountered, encountered underwater? Siphonophore. Siphonophore. <laughs> well, that actually makes sense to Dan. A siphonophore, because they, they come in these long, long strings. <laughs> and so, so Dan worries that it's yet, yet another uh, line or rope that might hang up his uh, his vehicle. They've yeah. been doing this for a while, and they get me on the edge of my seat every time. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely trash. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, I agree with that one. The The... the it's both sad and scary that to, to yeah. see to, to see trash. Okay, I'm uh, sorry to the north. We're coming up uh, to one, two, three, zero. Did uh, Jonathan give you instructions on how many layers to the cake? I don't know. Oh, well, you want to get right to the top? Uh, no, he did not. So I'm already bored with it. So whenever <laughs> you are, we can move on. I think, yeah. Rachel, do you have any insight? I think this was described to me as the last, we're doing kind of the last cut of this now. We and started. then we're uh, ready to move on to the next feature. Uh, just for some uh, some volume, uh, we started out at uh, 1,250 meters. We're now at 1,230 meters, so whatever the delta is there. 20, you know. 20 meters? Yeah, I failed horribly at math. And then we've been going back and forth approximately uh, 10, 20, 30 meters. So we got a Approximately 30, 30 uh, by 20 uh, yeah. area covered. Yeah, you think that's good? Like that. uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> 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 it, uh, yeah, 30 by 20. That's you know. I mean, that's 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 like 10,000 bucks a month in New York City. You know. <laughs> I've heard uh, 30 by 30 a few times. Uh, yeah. Just as a number thrown out there, I don't know if it means anything. Maybe maybe if we just if we you know figure out a way to eke out another. T I mean this is pretty cool looking yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, I th you know it, it is really good. So I, I would. If we do uh, two more passes, that'll be a thirty by thirty. There so. we go. That sounds like a good start. Yeah. yeah. Appeals to my sense of symmetry, but I don't know about you know, time wise of looking at other stuff. Uh, we have somebody commenting on the name Kamaehua Kanaloa. Um, and yeah, that uh, so Luihi is uh, the former name, and now it, it the seamount is referred to as Kamaehua Kanaloa, um, which um, better reflects the the Hawaiian culture. Yeah, it's amazing the the depth of the names in the Hawaiian language. So um, the birth of the seamount, um, also Pele, uh, the goddess, is uh, from the god the sea god Kanaloa. So this name is kind of honoring that the birth of the seamount from the sea god of Kanaloa. Um, and it's, yeah, really remarkable to learn the Hawaiian language and what the depths of these the, the words mean and why they renamed the seamount. Yeah, it's yeah. really fascinating. Um, hello to the Netherlands watching right now. Um, and uh, Larry, we've got a question about why uh, is the rock brown like that? Kind of a yellowish brown, right? Yeah, the, the rock is yellowish brown because uh, the, the fluids that are coming out of these hydrothermal vents are very rich in sulfides, a, a sulfur-based material. And that sulfur, is, sheen sulfur, is, is bright yellow. And uh, so as the fluid comes out and cools and precipitates, 
it's coating everything with this uh, yellowish col color. And it really is, it's probably if we really got up close, and don't get too close, Dan, he's pretty close already. <laughs> you say close? <laughs> You'd see it would get brighter and brighter yellow, but the, the light is attenuated, so the colors are attenuated so quickly that it, it gives it a, a kind of a brownish appearance, but it, it probably is quite bright yellow. And sulfur is uh, associated with volcanoes a lot, right? And it's got that mm -hmm. rotten egg smell. Like if you've ever visited Yellowstone, mm -hmm. yep. you would uh, you would smell that that rotten egg smell. Isn't the rotten egg smell coming from uh, what is that? Hydrogen sulfide, right? Yeah, the, the the real the real bad rotten egg smell comes from hydrogen sulfide, but there's sulfur. The, yeah. The S in H two S. So we had long discussions uh, on this yeah, watch fight, before about whether come up. fish smell. You're, no, you don't come organisms up. Yet. If you come not, up, you'll pull me. Do they smell? Can so they I'll, smell? I'll, Is there any sense of smell? <laughs> we certainly know they smell yeah, when they get old. That's uh, ROV is going to come up to one two two five. One two two five. Thank you. Yeah, if you come up right now, right, it would I would have to lateral a lot more, mm -hmm. and, or uh, sorry, I'd have to keep my heading cocked as I am now, and the extra thrust will just. Okay. It's really, really uh, soft there. Mm -hmm. Easy to disturb it. I've seen a few times where. I've yeah. So, so Dan, Dan is noticing that uh, the the sulfide deposits are very, very soft and oh, friable. Yeah. And so, if he gets too close with the uh, ROV with the thrusters, he actually starts uh, kicking it up into suspension, and then kind of defeats the purpose of our photogrammetry if we can't see what's going on. Yeah. So the. We can get close. We just got to be very gentle on the on the thrust and not uh, um, thrust backwards. So, for example, that you see falling there is while I'm kind of fighting to maintain my heading at the end of my tether. One thruster is uh, reversed. I got a little greedy there. Um, one of the viewers is pointing out that the Hawaiian uh, naming is like science labeling, describing characteristics of the subject. That's a cool uh, observation. Um, and we have a question. Have you ever gotten tangled in debris or old fishing gear at the seabed well, from what Sweden? Was it, four, four days ago? Yeah. <laughs> we, we certainly did. And, uh uh, somebody, somebody said, I, I thought you can go back and watch the old uh, YouTubes, but somebody commented that they couldn't do that. But uh, Yeah, it hasn't uh, been posted. It's not on the YouTube channel. Uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, we had, uh, we well, had once a... Once you get uh, closer to your ride, then you can come an up. An entanglement right? experience. Uh, yeah, once the tether starts ago. getting close to hitting and, in the face there. And our uh, pilot, Dan, was just phenomenal in uh, maneuvering to the line, pulling a knife out of... Uh, with one of the manipulators, uh, manipulator arms, transferring it to the other manipulator arm, and then using the first manipulator arm to grab onto the to the uh, to the rope, and then the arm with the knife in it to cut it very quickly. Fortunately, had a very very sharp knife. Dan, you want to give the advertisement for that New Zealand? Uh, yeah, the uh, Green River dive knife. Green River dive knife. Made in New Zealand. Cut right through it like butter, and we were free. Looking at the the port uh, stereo cam from Triclops and just the even just the, the colors this on this, you know, this is a really sticks artistically, out a it's a very to compelling image. It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a concept of like you know yellow in the center and then blue in the background it really gives us really it kind of comes back to our like you know our like our hunter gatherer <laughs> era with the campfire. Like you've got like the campfire in the center and then like the you know, night tones. Oh, Rachel's seeing deep meaning into, into I just see <laughs> rocks that are deep. <laughs> but that's great. <laughs> um, somebody's commenting that on the previous shift they mentioned that it was iron rich. Yeah, uh, there's usually iron associated with too, I think, but with this yellow color, I think we can be pretty sure that it's a, a, a sulfur, sulfur rich. Uh, but there's irons, mang uh, manganese, all, all those uh, are precipitated. Uh, with it, but I think uh, given this, if it was really iron rich, and you see some red areas too, the, the iron rich, uh, the more iron rich um, materials tend to be red, more reddish looking. And you can see some iron stain, it always looked like rust. When you see things that look like rust, rust color, it indicates uh, the an, oxidizing. an iron precipitate. 
It's a bit that's kind of sticking out there a little. You can see in Atlanta. I keep trying to run into it. So, Larry, how long would you say that this seamount has been forming? Oh, that's a that's an interesting question. Uh, there's been a lot of study of the seamount, and interestingly enough, the outer edge of this current cone, the, the kind of the, the widest crater we're seeing, uh, they believe formed only 5,600 years ago. So that's uh, geologically that's a uh, a second, um, so um, I'm not sure they could go beyond that in terms of what they were able to date, but they were able to date that the, the, the largest okay, defined part of the crater two, was about 5,600 years old. And then I said, the, this this little crater we're in now, the, this little crater we're in, we're in now um, formed um, just in 1996. So there's a question about uh, shimmering water. The, the, on the last shift, uh, they saw shimmering water and, and what makes the water look shimmering. Zero, and south. what makes a lot of water look shimmering is its increased temperature. Um, if you think about uh, something like a prism, uh, when light comes into it, it's broken up into its components and it changes the direction based on those different colors. If we take uh, water and have light flowing through it, and then heat it up, uh, it also has that same effect of refracting, of, of, of changing the path of the light. And the fact that the water is moving and the, 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 the light is refracted gives us this shimmering, shimmering effect. And so that's often a telltale sign for warm water, or uh, it's, a, it's what we look for, for uh, when we're looking for small seeps. We just look for where it's shimmering, and usually you can trace that back to the source of warmer water coming out. I always love it when Larry talks Snell's Law. Yeah. <laughs> well, check out this. Uh, so here we can see both the brownish and the yellow. So it looks right. like we really have a yep. balance of iron and sulfur. Yeah. And there you can see those pillow structures that are getting coated. Yeah. And this one's not broken. This one, uh, it's the surface of the pillow there. But I think sitting right on top of it, you see a little area where a pillow is broken. That's going to be really cool to see uh, rendered in 3D. They look like uh, like gallstones. Like gallstones? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a gallstone is a, a mineral precipitate, I yeah, guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's not quite the food analogy, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I touched and busted it up there somehow. No, it's, uh, you know, I think, especially you think of like organic chemistry or something, you're mostly dealing with like, you know, clear solutions. So it's, it's nice to. You know, you get your chemistry, but you get something that's a little more visual than just like, oh, here's, you know, here, here's here's this long chain organic molecule in water. So here, here we're uh, experiencing inorganic chemistry. And yeah, no, this is like... Much, much more colorful, maybe. This is like Jackson Pollock chemistry. Okay, that kind of concludes our 30 by 30. All righty. Okay, let's, uh, I think the plan was to come back down and travel along the, the bottom, if I, if I uh, yeah. heard correctly. And I like that plan. Yep. All right, so uh, you want to go straight down here, or do you want to start heading towards the next I waypoint? I want to go straight down, so because okay. we have this uh, intermittent issue with the winch, and we right. don't trust it yet, I want to minimize, we want to minimize, um, moving the boat and the winch at the same time and not having, you know, getting in a situation where we have a layback and we can't come up 
rapidly when we need to around all these uh, structures. Right on. So uh, we will get to some depth and then look around with the sonars and then plan a, a vessel move, 20 meter vessel move in a in a safe way so we're not relying on coming up on the winch while the vessel's moving. Because uh, we're so close to all the walls here, you know, by the time we get someone on the deck to come up, it could be. Yeah, right. We're going to end up with that alone so dangerously so close. So we get a little hint of the original color of the rock there, where the, the black is showing through. Uh, let me try and, I'm going to try and come under this dust storm and come back in front of you here. So I got a little close there and dusted it. So, so just off to my left. You see all those broken broken pillows there? Yeah. Hercules was here. Hercules. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, you could like carve like a little heart and some initials in there. <laughs> well, we I think uh, on the last on the last watch there was a, a marker from I assume from the submersible dive. You could. Oh, uh, wow. So, yeah, so they can come down now. Submersals will often put a marker down so they can come back to a spot. Um, it said number 32 on it. So. Oh wow, that was from the Pisces, right? I, I assume so. There's been a lot. There's been a lot of activity at this uh, at this place, though. It's, it's so such an interesting place. Uh, Russians have visited. Japanese have visited. Mm -hmm. are, are we meant to uh, do an orbit pass for this uh, wall? Or? Uh, I haven't heard anything about it. We, I mean, I we thought that was the original plan, but then uh, when uh, the watch switched, um, I thought because of the winch, there was yeah. some... Yeah, well, I mean, I th we were supposed to do a Norbit pass of the entire thing, Yeah. Uh, but we could do a tether link Nor Norbit pass. It's kind of hard to do a... If, if uh, you both are comfortable with that, I, I certainly have no objection to it. Yeah, as long as we're not moving the boat, we can do, as yeah. Chris says, a Norbit. Yeah, let's get it. Okay, hold, hold, hold on there, right? I'm going to... We're actually going to probably have to come up to do that. I'm just going to get back to the north, Chris, and I'll turn sure. to the south. And yeah, yeah, because we're going to want it on our port side, right? Yeah. How far away from it do you want to be? Uh, It looks like there's a nice substrate down there for good DVL lock, so a little bit further off is probably actually better. Right. Ten meters, or further? yeah. Let's let's start there and see how that looks. Okay, I'm gonna turn my head, and uh, I'm at one. Let's see, twelve thirty-five, somewhere, not quite in the middle. Top third, maybe. Let's uh, look at south there. Up a little might be good. Roger. Up a little and out a little, uh, and back off a little. Can do. Mm. Okay, let so what we're doing now is we're coming a little further yeah, away from the wall meters. to let the let multi beam solar, on here. which travels much further than the the optical systems, the, the systems that depend on light, to get a a complete map of the area we've just uh, done photogrammetry on. But it, it'll cover a much larger area, so it'll give the photogrammetric image so yeah, um, it's up five there nice basically context. one two three zero to be fit and, I've moved, uh, and it'll uh, be used to help give real world position 15 meters away from the, the wall images that jonathan records photogrammetrically with the camera yeah something like that are we getting good dvl yeah I'm yeah uh, about 20 meters away from the wall yeah we should get it kind of flattened out there at uh, 20 meters below us at 1250. Yeah, that yeah. As it looks like, yeah, I think twelve thirty, twelve fifty should be yeah, close if, to the yeah, bottom. Yeah, we could even come out even a little more. Roger. Uh, and up. I don't. I don't know if we want to. It'd be nice to try to get the top of the feature. So. Yeah, I could come up. So uh, Manel has pulled up the map for us on, me, right? on channel hold three. About Ten meters above me. Yeah. So what you're seeing there in channel three is the multi-beam sonar mapping. The Blues represent deep and purples represent the deepest depths. 
greens, yellows, and reds, the shallowest depth, relative to the position uh, uh, DBL of Hercules, which has the sonar close. mountain on it. And where you see that little uh, red grid in the colored, Say again, Dan? colorful uh, picture. The DBL is pinging at 50 meters below us. All right, yeah, we probably don't want to. Uh, we probably don't want to go any higher than that. Then you get in the top of the wall there. No, so uh, I think we will. I'm still probably. Uh, I think yeah. Ooh, I'm, I think I'm ten meters below the top of the wall there. Yeah. Well, I see the top here, and you're just below it. But we can look up and see it. Right. Catch the edge. Anyway, we might not be able to see the top, but I can probably come up another ten if you want. You think we'll lose? You think we'll maintain DBL? Let's try it. And see. All right. Oh, there's a very important comment from a view of that come marker up, 32 10. was exactly at the spot where they found some active vents. Oh wow! Okay, and I don't think we saw active vents at that site. Although uh, I did hear the mention, I wasn't I wasn't on watch at the time. I was I was uh, looking at the TV, so I, I saw what was going on, but I wasn't listening to everything that was going on. So I don't I'm not sure we saw the active venting at that site. And so again, this is part of the ephemeral nature of these vents. They Should come and they go over and the they top of it there, maybe. change their position often. I'm gonna turn my head a little bit. Um, it's all about plumbing. Okay. Yeah, all right. Now I can see the. I mean, it keeps going up, but like yeah, I think but it, we can see the top of this ledge. It, it kind yeah. of breaks away a little bit yeah, yeah. there at 1220. And we got good DVL lock, yeah. We do. And you're seeing the the base at about 50 meters below you. Uh, yeah, I came up another 10, so it's um, the DVL's pinging it at 60 meters below. Okay, so that's uh, that's saying. All right, let me go ahead and restart the survey. About 12, 1278, 1280 for the bottom of the. I'm up at 12.20 now. I've come up quite a bit. Uh, viewers commenting that Robert Waters saw a small group of tiny uh, vents, I think. All right, looks like there's a, this is pretty much par orthogonal to the track that you ran, right? Yeah. Correct, yeah, I could bring my head a little to the right here. Yeah, do it just a little to the right, I think. That way we stay away from the wall. But yeah, basically it's going north and south. Okay, there. yeah, then just back up as far as you can and with tether rise, unless you're already there. Already there. Yeah, Chris, let's, if let's you can toss up your more, uh, cross events. section display too, that would be nice. The, uh, I, I yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. This? Yep. This one? Yeah. That one, yeah. Yeah. So in this display here, this black display with the thin green line, you're actually seeing a cross section of what the sonar is seeing. So you see the the bottom of the of the pit, the uh, wall to the left coming up, and, and a little plateau, and then another another level even higher at the top of the top of the pit. Uh, that's probably it. It's probably going to start yarding around on my head there. If okay. I come anymore. Yeah, and uh, it looks like the, did you have it in auto depth or something? I do now, yeah, but I don't have to fly whatever, in auto depth. Yeah, whatever you were doing was working really well. Super steady, so. I don't know. It's still working really well. Okay. Depth is nice and clean, so yeah, let's just yeah. go for it. I, okay, I'm just going to click in now. 40 meter step there to the south. Yeah, nice do it. South. Here we go. Alexa, move the vehicle 40 meters south. <laughs> so one of the viewers said that uh, Robert Waters saw a small group of, uh, of tiny uh, vents, uh, probably around that marker 32. Yeah, I think I heard some chatter about. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did. I did uh, see the shimmering water again. I just didn't have the audio on because I was busy doing homework. Yeah, I didn't see it either. I was busy stuffing my face with steak and shrimp salad and fried cauliflower. <laughs> Sorry. So a wonderful comment about the Norbert Sonar almost <laughs> looks like a tropical jungle pool, just missing the waterfall. And that's <laughs> intriguing because one of the types of plots we often show is what we call a waterfall plot. <laughs> Quite a different meaning, though. What is a waterfall plot? A waterfall plot is one that's scrolling. It There's one scrolling along. Yeah, oh, Chris will show us one. Yeah, yeah there it is on, on the bot on the bottom. Yeah. There. So that shows us the backscatter over the time, but this is all pretty hard rock, so it shows up uh, pretty consistently. And these displays really aren't designed for vertical walls. Yeah. 
so it's so, not so very interesting. So what a waterfall is a display that keeps scrolling, gotcha. scrolling in front of you. <laughs> cool. I think it does that weird stuff sometimes where it doesn't take the steps. I had to click a 40 meter step like six times to get 40 to go. Oh, and you're in auto out, not auto depth, okay? Uh, no, I'm in auto depth. Oh, you are? Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I had the colors inverted in my head. Yeah, this is, the depth is very stable. The These are the, the pilotage plots, so I can determine how well. Thus proving that the AI can fly the vehicle much better <laughs> than the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, look at it there. That's nice. Yeah. Here's my depth. Yeah. Straight line. So how, mu how much look more do you want to do, Chris? Huh? Sorry? How, how much more do you want to do? Uh, we'll do the full tether length. Okay. You can you can increase speed a little bit, Dan. There's no, there, we don't need to go this slow. Uh, if I go faster, you'll get more purposing. Okay. Because then of the in that case, let's we got it stabilized. Let's just the, let's just yeah. roll with it this way. Yeah. So should only take faster, a, should only take a couple minutes yep. to do the whole plot. Yep. That's right. Better to get take our time and get good data than rush and get crap. Agreed. We're out. We're halfway there. Yeah. Halfway there, kids. We've never been closer. <laughs> we do have some costumes in the room for yeah. Halloween. I think the highlight of which is our so, lovely science communication fellow. So I'm seeing <laughs> random punches throughs. Yeah. And I have Thanks. seen that before wherever we have areas of venting. I get bad returns, bad detections. Um, hmm. So I'm wondering if that's what we're seeing. Because like, I'll see them come in and then fade away, just like just like this one right here. That's pretty high up for the, uh, the vents there. You think? Down below us, yeah. There's a rumor. I don't know. It could be some diffuse flow. There. I don't know. It's, it's near the edge of the swath, too. So maybe it's just edge of swath stuff, but... Oh, yeah. Nice flat red line. There's that piece that was sticking out I kept trying to run into. Did nice. run into. Do you have a full water column display? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, maybe we looked at that. We might see. Just swamp in the zoom pipe in. there. Let me zoom in a little bit. Chris is taking all the bandwidth Hercules can give him. Nah. <laughs> Uh, D, we can confirm that that is in fact not the case, and that uh, you are <laughs> go to go ahead and pump those numbers up, K2. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I was trying to add a little drama to the orbit survey. <laughs> yeah, I'm nowhere near the uh, cameras. I believe we are still uh, looking at the oh, be a good utilization. I'm excited for this one. This will we're at good nav. We got yep. getting good data points. This should be a nice map. No, this is, this is very nice. Yeah. Uh, on the uh, bandwidth utilization of the receive side of our gigabit uplink, we are still in the rookie numbers component. Someone's asking if it could be bubbles. That's how they were locating the methane seeps off the coast of the Pacific Northwest by seeing bubble returns in the methane sonar. Bubbles. Yeah, and we would see them. That, that's why I asked Chris to, to um, bring up the water column. Put yeah. on the water column display because indeed we would see something like that. I think we're going to have to ground truth these uh, alleged vents on the side of the wall there. Well. <laughs> on the way down. On the way down. <laughs> okay. If you can coincidentally uh, go by it on the way down, that's if, fine. Yeah. If it were to just happen on the way down, yeah. There's something. Yeah, I see. Um, that's what I'm seeing over there. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to look at. Uh, that is kind of at the far ranges, but that. I've that got. I've got five meters further away. That's okay. Happy with that. Still oh yeah, I'm. I'm actually. That's better because we're get coming over top of this ledge down there. So. Right. That's perfect. Yeah, oh. that's looking really good. Perfect. We'll have to do. Yeah. We have a question. Does marine snow get thicker as you go deeper, or does it always stay as a sort of faint glimmer? Well. The marine snow I've seen is <coughs> is quite variable, and, and I would I would you know we have certain layers where there it, there's more of an accumulation, but I I, uh, I don't get the impression it gets thicker as you get deeper. It's probably just the opposite. I think we we more often run into it 
in, near the surface where the productivity is, is, is much higher, where the source of the material is much higher. On the, last, on the last leg, we had a, a, a wonderful uh, small autonomous vehicle called Mesobot, which is designed to very slowly move in the mid-water depths uh, with very high-resolution cameras um, and eDNA samplers on it, too, sampling the DNA of the water. Um, and it would find you know, certain layers, and they would correspond to layers we could see acoustically where it just looked like a blizzard and then oh, wow. other, other layers that were quite clear. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a gradual thickening with depth. It, w it would actually be variable. Um, and somebody's asking, how is Hercules and Atalanta actually controlled? Is it with two joysticks or something else? Correct, two joysticks. Did they hit the reply from Dan? Well, actually, there's way more than two joysticks yeah. up here. There's like one, two, three, four. Five, six, yeah, half a dozen. Um, and they're asking, how is our Halloween going so far? Have we decorated Nautilus for Halloween? Um, so like Manel was saying, there are some of us wearing costumes and we sent down some pumpkins with Hercules uh, to see what Can would happen. Come down five meters, please. Uh, down five. That was a little anticlimactic <laughs> with the pumpkins. <laughs> Not much happened. Wait till we start coming up. Did they? I don't think so. I think they. No, no, I was talking about the dang pumpkins. They contain too much water, and so just it, nothing it, really these happened. These were very small pumpkins. Yeah, they were. Color. Yeah, maybe if we had like carved one. The the uh, staff did carve a pumpkin that's sitting in the galley though, which is pretty cool. It's funny because yesterday we had a small team go on a pumpkin mission trying to find a pumpkin for us to carve and we didn't know that the the crew had one the whole time <laughs> yeah and all they could find were tiny pumpkins yeah and spoiler alert uh the crew is also breaking out the uh wait till you walk in the galley for dinner <laughs> it's gonna be a surprise um i don't know i can't do we have a view of the pumpkins and how they're doing anyway? uh not at the moment yeah because somebody's asking how the pumpkins are doing. Last we saw, they were just fine. <laughs> you can uh, bubble cam the pumpkins if you want to hit uh, toolbox there. Yeah, they... So a lot of times when we take things to depth and they... Uh, they don't explode till the way up. Hey, uh, Larry, look oh, at the water really? column here in the middle. Yeah, if they get. You see that? Pressurized and as we directly, come up, directly below the us. Has to yeah, go this somewhere. is very exciting. If we look at the the water column plot, the little plot uh, in the lower left corner of feed three. Come down uh, We're actually five, seeing uh, what looks like a vent coming out. Yeah. Into the water column. Uh, Chris, maybe you could put your uh, standby bridge. Your pointer on it, so people can see. Yeah, right there. Oh, so yeah, yeah we there, see it right, right there. there. That's where it's right. Re re yeah, zoom in. There you go. Look at that. Enhance. Yeah. That's exciting. Do we want to go down there and check that out after we this? We absolutely do. All right. Let me. Uh, <laughs> can you drop? Can you drop a marker on it? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> drop a target, right in the window here. Uh, single target. And then for those who wanted to position. check on we're, the pumpkins. We're about as far as south as we can get there. Okay, can you do me a favor and just do like we a slow a rotate to, the, to starboard? Thanks, Manel. They're the pumpkins, you guys. We'll rotate to starboard. And I'll try. Right of the screen if you can't see it. Yeah, the, uh, channel three are the pumpkins really quick. And then. Yeah, this is really great. Oh, that's good. That's great, Chris. Uh, yeah, right here. Yeah, this is really awesome, Dan. Thanks. It's going to get a little herky jerky as uh, I rotate right. Well, that's okay. This is like other. this is kind of bonus data, so. <laughs> Even if you have to come back a little bit to make the rotation, that's okay. Can do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that got us the edge of that feature to where it starts to slope, so it just is a nice end to the. To the model. Yeah. yeah. 
it's not going to be as pretty as the center, but it'll give us something. I mean, the, the nav has been really good, so you can even see little micro rocks here, see? Yeah. All right. Good there. That's good. I'm going to leave the survey on so we can keep the map for uh, to to approach that target. Right that. Right. So Hold you can. Way. So yeah, you can see it right here. Wow. Uh, we have some viewers very appreciative, Manella, of the of the quick pumpkin view. <laughs> Always happy to help. Yeah, and there's still hope for the pumpkins, you guys. Dan says that maybe you know they'll implode on the way. Up or something. And you can actually now see it on the Zeus cam over here. Hey, man, out. Yeah. Zoom in. Copy that. Yeah, we're still picking this up there, Larry, as we come down on it. Let's see. Gotta examine those pumpkins. <laughs> oh yeah. Damn pumpkins. And okay. Chris, you you were able to get a you get able to get a, a fix on it. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. we're coming down on it. Okay, great. Pumpkins look like pumpkins. <laughs> they do. They look a little bigger. They're at least the farther one. Uh, like like it's kind of like bloated. Maybe? Yeah. Right. It's I don't. Okay. I'm gonna go to my phone and look at the, the pictures. Before. Yeah. Good idea. Should get uh, smaller as we go down, but. Um. Oh, you know what? It might it. It might have been the edge of this rock here that we saw. Yeah. Oh. We might have been getting just the very edge of that. So that should have swept Norbit back across the entire biz, biz Okay, you can go wide, thanks. Copy. I don't know, Manel, they don't look too different. Oh. I know. That's all right. So Chris, the question is, could that be just a sidewall too? Yeah, I think it, I think it might have, I think we might have got just that very first edge. edge we were just starting to right. see it in the water column. Yeah, I bet I bet you that's what it was. Yeah. But it's a nice vertical structure on the bottom. So the wrong uh, button. Whoop. That would be good for Jonathan anyway. Yeah. It's a really skinny rock. Exactly. That's <laughs> so well worth looking at. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, we're coming. But, 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 hold on. I'm, look, I'm looking at the wrong wall here. That was the south wall. What's that? Uh, which one are his side? Uh, yeah. Fly back over to the... Uh, West wall here, not to be confused. There's so many walls. <laughs> so someone suggested that we could make pumpkin f pie from the pumpkins that have been down <laughs> to 12, 50 meters. I'm not sure I want to eat those. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> sound a little salty to me. Salty mm. pie with a hint of hydraulic oil. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. Uh, and somebody's asking, what do we expect the pumpkins to do? We expect uh -oh. them to explode violently and splatter all yes. of Jonathan's cameras with pumpkin guts that's on the way up. Yeah, that's that what we were hoping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, the concussion will take out all three of the Tricolops cameras. <laughs> That'll be it. Much to the joy of Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> we have spares. No worries. <laughs> Okay, are we going to investigate this marker? I mean, this uh, anomaly, or are we yeah. going to look for yes, the marker? It's over there. It's over to there, 90 degrees to starboard. Yeah, I came back down to get the wall here. Yep. Know. Here, I'm going to pull this up full screen so you can see a little better. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. So in uh, Channel 3, you guys can see the map that we just okay, sorry, uh, created. Check something real quick. 
Uh, somebody suggests that we pickle the pumpkins. I've never heard of pickled pumpkins. And somebody says if the pumpkins survive the depths, maybe we should use that shape for future deep sea research vessels. <laughs> as, it, as it happens. Well, I, I we think have a sun star on board, which I'm really disappointed we haven't got out of the case yet. But it is pumpkin shaped. Jonathan tested it, I think, to uh, 600 bar before we came out here. Put it in a uh, hy hydrostatic test chamber. Yes, please. What is the sun star? Some contraption that it's a, a glass sphere with. Uh, whole bunch of lights in it and batteries. Oh, very, cool. very bright lights. Oh, okay, gotcha. I should remind him of that. Yeah. Why, why do we not have the Sun Star on Atlanta? To my right, still light? Yeah. It's going to be... You've been... Uh, theorizing back here that the the pumpkins the fact that they've survived to this depth is more based upon their they're fresh so there's no you know usually as any like biological matter decay it starts to give off gas so because these are fresh pumpkins you know it's their there's water the edge filled. yeah i think we were getting just that yeah. that very edge and just it was just starting to pop in the water column uh the pumpkins are porous so they've uh, absorbed uh yeah they from sort of the water on the way down. Be interesting to see how fast it can get back out. I think actually a, a pumpkin would actually, generally speaking, be a pretty poor choice for a shape underwater because you have a lot of seams, like you've got the bulges yeah, in the yeah, seams, yeah, yeah. and usually the seams are always the weakest spot. So, so, like, Dan, uh, so Dan, you want to that follow, that, follow that up, <laughs> please? My, it would be my pleasure to follow this up there. Is there any side view, end view, this view? No, this view, just, uh, just. Somebody's saying that the p pumpkins are already pickled because of uh, hydrothermal vent cooking. <laughs> we have a pack of pickled pumpkins on here. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any kinds of like animals or you know creatures that are adapted to survive? Yeah, the we can stay a little bit lower here because the boat's static. And give a good view of Hercules. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, keep. Yeah, let's just keep it in the light there, so I can just see above it, so I don't get surprised by any overhanging. Um, but from what I understand, these are pretty young hydrothermal vents, so okay we weren't here. really expecting to to find much alive, but I think probably Taylor Ann knows a lot more about this than than I do. Yeah, you're you're correct. Um, we really weren't expecting to see much chemosynthetic life here other than potentially, you know, bacterial mats. Um, but would that would be more difficult to see. What is the uh, the black sand substance? I think that's just the basalt and on top of it is the, the sulfur yeah, uh, precipitates. It looks sandy. Oh, it's this rock underneath yeah, there. Yeah, it's this rock. It. Yeah, it's some yeah. salt. Mm. I think you're at the I think you're at the top now. It's very very cool. Just this uh, knife edge. No, I'm at uh, yeah. 1250. So the top is like 1220. I came down deeper. <laughs> We're just kind of far to the south where the wall was broken up, but I yeah. see on Atlanta's left there, that's... Control copies. Uh, 
you're good for now, TJ. Um, yeah, stand by, TJ. You see the pink wall?